we are so lucky through everything that happens at Cometh. You know, the, 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 the hundreds of pieces that these festivals have created. They all get re really into it and look forward to doing something a little bit different. Yeah, it doesn't matter what your background is, doesn't matter uh, how good you are, there's something for everyone to do here. It's been so rewarding, really. It was wonderful. To have what I've written actually brought to life by all of the, the people here is really is cool. Just to be exploring different ways of making music. It's the first time they've had kind of real people performing their pieces. And then when we came downstairs and had an audience in front of us, people really went for it, which was brilliant. It's about what you make of it. And so as long as you're willing to sort of surrender yourself to the experience and let the music take you somewhere, you're in for a treat every time. The reason the festival was established in 2016 was to really uh, showcase the extraordinary work that Coma does, um, thanks to its the the repertoire and our publications of Open Score and the, now the Part Songs, uh, to show that. The, the essential truth of, after all, that's in uh, Coma's name, contemporary music for all, proving that's the point. And really, the, the essential watchword is participation, is, is getting involved, releasing as much creativity as, as we possibly can. And I've come on board to help take the festival into its next sort of life cycle. So that includes things like involving more locations around the UK and beyond, um, looking at different ways we represent contemporary music um, through performance and through development and seeing if we can take it to the next level and just finding ways to keep the festival morphing so it's always moving forward into sort of new territory. So I was here with Bolton Music Service with our youth orchestra taking part in this amazing Coma Festival Day. You know, children learning musical instruments and young people coming along to orchestra is a great thing, but I think quite often we fall into the trap of them just playing typical Western canon. So I think it's really good to, you know, to expose them to this new music and for them to explore and, and see what people are writing now and people who are alive and a similar generation to them. So I wrote my piece with a lot of um uh, sort of randomness and a lot of choice uh, in a way that sort of allows the performer to be an individual in uh, within the, the ensemble. Um, I, I suppose I was sort of trying to write in a way that sort of embellishes the, the different levels and, and to get the, the most out of that. It's, it's, it's really cool, especially because this is, this is the first time that I've had anything uh, performed. Coma Glasgow is only just formed, so the group is growing. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of interest, and um, the sound of our group when we play the contemporary pieces, it's um, very different to what you would expect from an orchestra, amateur orchestra. It's like it's kind of electroacoustic, lots of percussion thing that you hear. You know, it brings people together and. Uh you feel like you're even, or how to say it, equal. You're like you don't really search for, you know, who is better or not. Like you, you come as you are and you share what you, who you are. And I like that, that we can do that. Today the Montage Orchestra is here to workshop eight pieces by eight composers from three local secondary schools. We actually contacted Coma first of all because we wanted to play a piece by Sally Beamish called The Day Dawn and Coma is covering the higher and performance cost for that, so that's fantastic. And then when I started speaking to Coma about our composition project, they were very excited to get Coma involved with that as well. And the point is, well, it's been fantastic for the composers to work not only with the orchestra but also with the composer Andrew Tuvey to help them to improve their works and prepare them for us to play. And what's extraordinary, um, you kind of can't help um, as an older composer reflecting back on what would I have been writing when I was 13 or when I was 15 and the standard is very high so I'm, I'm chuffed, I'm very happy. You know, so honestly, I just feel uh, humbled and excited about what's what's going to be possible in 2022, and it will be, you know, it will be a moment of celebration because we will be coming together again. You know, it, that will that have a digital component for sure, but I have no doubt also that insofar as all of this is possible, we will we will be together wherever wherever we're uh, in, you know, whichever location the festival is happening, and we will experience also that wider sense of togetherness of uh, making music together as being part of this festival that connects so many parts of the United Kingdom together and increasingly internationally. I, I can't wait.
A very big welcome to this launch of the 2022 Festival of Contemporary Music for All. I'm Chris Surety, Director of COMA, and I've been responsible for the development of the festival since its inception in 2016. In its short life, the festival has proved itself as a means of bringing together those who share and wish to promote the experience and value of participating in contemporary music. For COMA, the festival has provided a platform for creating a repertoire underpinned by the concept of inclusion. And with this in mind, commissioning and premiering new works by some of our most promising and exciting new generations of composers, as well as works from those who are established and widely recognized. It's also opened up opportunities to establish new contemporary music ensembles here in the UK and beyond. In short, the festival has become an effective means of fulfilling Coma's aim to encourage and enable musicians, whatever their experience, to be involved in the creation and performance of new music. Equally important, the festival has demonstrated a capacity to capture the imagination and involvement of the wider music making community, and in so doing, fulfill another of Coma's aims to work in partnership with professional and amateur musicians, ensembles, colleges and music services and wherever they are to come together a common to share a common mission that contemporary music is an essential part of our culture and by celebrating it through participation demonstrate its vivid nature and the excitement of communicating this to new audiences. In 2016 the festival was based in six city venues. Since then, the number and breadth of locations and partners has grown significantly with each festival, such that in 2020, more than 80 organizations were involved in 30 locations here in the UK and further afield, and in particular in Netherlands and Germany. With such rapid growth, it became clear as early as 2018 that the festival needed dedicated staffing and thanks to funding from Arts Council England, we've been able to do just that as of October last year. We are absolutely delighted to have appointed Tamara Curler as Festival Director with the task of building on what has been achieved to date and moving the festival forward as one of the most important initiatives in contemporary music today. So with no more ado, I'm handing you over to Tamara who will reveal some of the many things we already have in store for the 2022 festival. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the launch. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. And thank you, Chris, for that very warm introduction. As Chris said, my name is Tamara Kohler, and I am beyond honoured to be taking over as director of this very special festival. We are absolutely thrilled that you will be with us tonight and very excited to unveil some of the major commissions for the festival, some new projects that we've got in the making, and most importantly, some more information on how you can get involved. Please say hi in the chat throughout the event and tell us where you're watching from. We'd love to know where you're all coming from tonight. For those who are new to Coma, we're all about creating opportunity for community musicians to create, interact, develop, and explore contemporary classical music. For almost 30 years, as Chris said, Coma has been commissioning accessible new music for amateur musicians of all standards and providing opportunities for musicians, composers and creators alike. The biennial festival, as Chris said, was initiated in 2016 as a celebration of everything Coma does. And now five years later, we're embarking on our fourth festival. From March 4th to 6th, 2022, Participants, professionals, enthusiasts from all over the world will come together to share their love of contemporary music. Over the last few months, I've had so much fun getting to know all of the wonderful community musicians and local ensembles that make up the Coma family. You can find Coma ensembles in most corners of this country and beyond, from Orkney to Edinburgh to Tynmouth, Norfolk, Maastricht. Getting to know them all it's become really clear to me that the festival is the holy grail of Coma's output, where local ensembles have the opportunity to shine nationally and even internationally. They get to explore new works, they get to curate works, concerts and perform shows of their own, and they get to work alongside professional musicians. Most importantly, 
It's a chance to find budding new contemporary musicians out there who might want to get involved. The festival has this incredible way of bringing new members to each of the local ensembles and indeed inventing new ensembles in new locations. I'm really excited now to introduce you to some of the Coma ensembles that make up the heart and soul of our festival. So we are Coma Sheffield and we are a very new group. We only started in December. So we think that Coma is... Inimitable. Tantalising. Intriguing. Unlimited. My name's Matthew Hardy and I'm the musical director of Coma London Ensemble. As a conductor, I've always loved working with composers, commissioning new music and giving premieres. I think the work that Coma is doing to bring new music to new audiences is really important. Hello, my name is Ruta Vetkoskaite and I am a director of uh, Coma Glasgow. I think through participation, both professional and amateur musicians can access elements of new music that can be enjoyable, interesting, intriguing, or just beautiful. Hi, we're Coma Hello, I'm Julia Usher, musical director of Coma East. Our group of multi-instrumentalists, composers and vocalists likes to develop project themes, often through improvisation, which we then present in performances, collaborations and workshops. Hello, we are the Coma Singers. We've been working together for about six years now, exploring and stretching the idea of what a vocal ensemble can be. You're watching part of the first run-through of a piece that uses chance procedures to generate an ever-changing graphic score on screen. My name is Tom Kessels and I'm chairman of Coma Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Coma Eindhoven consists of 18 enthusiastic musicians, strings, woodwinds, piano, electric guitar, and accordion. I'm Chris Holly. I'm the music director of Coma Bristol. So what Coma does is bring, I think, the best of both worlds together. We get to turn up and have fun and socialize, get creative, experiment and perform together. But we're often working with living composers and we're playing music that's rarely or has never been heard before. So I think that's really exciting. We're Coma East Midlands and we rehearse in Nottingham. We think Coma is Experimental. Bizarre. Thought-provoking. Crazy. Different. Fun. My name is Elaine Levine and I direct the Leeds Coma Ensemble and I love exploring how music of the past has influenced our contemporary music. I am Anne-Marie from Coma Maastricht in the Netherlands. For us, Coma is... Precious, great, hilarious, inventive, joyful. Crazy, lustful, magical, amorous, playful, grizzly, romantic, swinging, torturous, unifying, very wonderful, exotic, youthful, super! <laughs> Thank you so much to our wonderful Koma ensembles who introduced themselves. So a highlight of this festival is the opportunity to commission a whole lot of new works. Now, across the festival, that takes many different formats, but the major commissions for the festivals, for the festival, rather, is really unique. It's not just an ordinary commission. Coma presents composers with a really unusual task to write a new work in an open scored format that will be accessible to community music makers all over the world, regardless of their instrumentation or their experience. Beyond those considerations, there's also a really specialised circumstance in which the pieces are premiered. Across the festival weekend, the open school commissions are premiered in multiple locations and also by multiple instrumentations and performers. It's a really unique experience, I would say unique to Coma, and a rare opportunity for any composer. So it's something we really have to think about as a team. Then there's also the ongoing legacy of the work, Coma has an incredible library of 800 plus scores, most Coma commissions, and the open score works find their way after their premiere into our library. The library is available digitally to musicians all over the world, and 
we found that the festival commissions often have a really incredible long life beyond their initial premieres. So clearly it's no easy task to find the right voices for these commissions. But I think we've done pretty well this year, I must say. <laughs> I'm really excited to introduce you to the 2022 Festival Open Score composers. They are Amy Rice, Oliver Leith, Sia Leone Sloan, Ishani, excuse me, Ishani Perapanagam, and Eloise Werner. So we invited each of these composers to introduce themselves and speak about how they're going to approach the commission. Hi, my name is Amy Bryce and I'm really excited to be one of the composers writing for the 2022 Coma Festival, which is happening next March. Um, I was born and I grew up in Sussex, but I've been living in London for many years now. I write in a variety of different circumstances with collaborators across the United Kingdom and in Europe as well. One of the things I'm really interested in at the moment is this idea of co-authorship and the changing role of the composer in the 21st century. And that's one of the reasons why this Coma Commission is so exciting because I'm writing for that open score format, which means that to me, um, I get to think of it as writing for um, a, a living, breathing organism, one that is adaptable and susceptible to change um, depending on who approaches the work rather than something that is set in stone. I'm um, really active in the education scene. I love introducing contemporary music to musicians of all ages and standards rather than the trained elite. Um, one of the things that I'm working on at the moment is uh, how we can produce scores for music that is non-linear and how scores can be seen more as tools for improvisation and um, like quite extravagant graphic things that can um, provoke a response within the performer. Um, I brought a long one to show you because I always find it a little bit difficult to visualise what people really mean when they start talking about this. Um, so this is a work in progress that will eventually be stuck together. So that's one of mine. I like giving performers things like that to look at and try and interpret. Um, I think that's all from me. I am really excited to see how this collaboration will unfold over the coming months and thank you Coma so much for having me. Bye. Hey, hello, I'm Oliver Leith. I'm a composer. Um, I'll be writing a piece for the Coma Festival, uh, which is very exciting, very into the ethos of everything there. Um, I usually write music which is, um, I guess, at, well, at the moment, it's looking at the everyday. I'm not sure if that's just because that's all we've been able to look at recently. But that that's that. Um, I'm particularly excited to be writing for Flexible Ensemble because that's how I started writing music about 15 years ago for whatever horrible, beat-up, broken things in my old school's cupboard and whatever musicians and non-musicians were up for playing, whatever. So that should be fun. It'll be, it's, it'll be nice to not think about what instruments can do. Anyway, thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Zia Leon Sloan, and I'm a writer of music and words. I'm currently in my final year at the Royal Northern College of Music, studying composition with Emily Howard and Laura Bowler. I'm due to start a master's course there in September. I'm really interested in the power of art to respond to political and ecological ideas. Much of my own work emerges from my spiritual practice and from my love and reverence for the natural world. I'm really excited to be creating a new work for the 2022 Coma Festival. A big thank you to Coma for inviting me to do this. This is a turbulent and fragile time for everyone not least for those of us in the creative sectors, but I'm looking forward to starting the piece and all being well, perhaps even to meeting some of you there in person. Hello, my name is Ishani Perampanayagam and I'm one of the 2022 Coma Festival Open Score Composers. I found my way to composing reasonably recently. Most of my life so far has been primarily performing as a classical pianist with a new music specialism, but also as a music director and an improviser for comedy often. 
my childhood also was quite full of rock and groovy beats so my sound as a composer is a mix of all of those things. The way I compose is either in some way collaborative or really taking the performers into account and what they bring and really trying to get their personality and artistry and expertise out of them. I really want my work to be I don't know, some kind of impetus for the musicians who are there and live and making it to really bounce off each other and create something that is theirs and only partially mine. It really is a group effort. So I'm really excited about writing an open score commission for Coma. It's right up my street. Looking forward to it. Hello, my name is Eloise Werner. I am a composer and also a singer. And I'm so excited to be writing a new piece for Coma Festival next year. I taught on the Coma Online Summer School last year and I loved it. I was so impressed by the openness and creativity and maturity of all the participants. And I can't wait to see what we could create together again next year. I often write work that's quite theatrical, often using the voice in a very theatrical and uh, direct way, so perhaps the piece will have some of these elements, but we'll see. And in the meantime, a huge thank you to Coma for commissioning me for this work, and I can't wait to work with you. Thank you so much to all of our composers. We are really, really looking forward to working with you and we will see you all very soon. So we have many other new works that will premiere across the festival weekend, including commissions organised by the individual ensembles and also through our ongoing partnerships. A couple to focus or to highlight, I might say, um, we're really proud to be teaming up again with Non-Classical, providing a commission opportunity for the four composers involved in their latest Associate Composers Scheme. And we're also really proud to be welcoming back Non Such Orchestra to the 2022 festival, where they'll commission and develop eight new works from local high school students. So on to another new and exciting initiative. I am very, very proud to announce tonight uh, a new youth scheme that COMA are embarking on called My Sounds. So this is a youth project, as I said, and it will provide mentors and development opportunities for 10 young people aged 14 to 18 to develop their own creative network and explore concepts with each other, such as what it means in 2021 to be a composer performer. Through a six month program, both online and in person, COVID pending, <laughs> These young people will create and perform new works together for premiere at the festival and also online. My Sounds will be kicking off later this year, including the announcement of our esteemed mentors who will be taking part in the program. So really make sure that you're watching the Coma website and our social media for more details about that soon. Thinking about Coma's past youth engagements, I thought it'd be really nice to share with you an excerpt from performance from our 2020 festival. Coma are lucky to have a really great ongoing partnership with Bolton Music Services. And this was a performance of an open score commission called Chorale for the Cauldrons of Hell by Stephen Montague. It was conducted by Stuart Hazelton and it features members of the Bolton Youth Orchestra and the 2022 Manchester All Comers and other special guests like Adam Swain from the Riot Ensemble. Enjoy.
a really moving excerpt there that was Chorale for the Cauldrons of Hell by Stephen Montague. And I strongly recommend going over to the Coma YouTube channel and watching the whole performance because it's really quite a special piece. I'm really honoured to have it um, within our collection. So after this past year lived online, it seems only fitting that the 2022 festival take a hybrid format. We're of course still keeping live performance and workshops at the forefront of the festival. And I know that we're all particularly itching to get back to a live gig soon, hopefully not too long now. But we'll also be hosting an online platform across the weekend. We felt it was really important to present live and online events side by side for a number of reasons. The beauty of an online event means that you can access it from anywhere in the world and the mass uptake in live streaming in this past year has been an important and I think a worthy step in truly opening up the arts to everyone particularly those who might not have the means to go to a venue or might not physically be able to get to a venue. Also as the Coma Festival takes place in so many different locations across the world now this online platform will give audiences and indeed performance a chance to experience more than just their local event. We'll be aiming to live stream as many possible uh, performances from the festival as possible. Finally, as I mentioned before, I've been catching up a bit with the Coma Ensemble directors. And I have to say the way that the directors and indeed their ensembles have altered their practice throughout the pandemic has been nothing short of inspiring. I, I just, I can't begin to tell you how positively they've taken on the challenges. So many of the ensembles have taken, for example, the challenges that Zoom poses in music making, latency, um, uh, inability to process sound evenly, and they've used it as a creative prompt. So they've actually taken it and said, well, how can we use that kind of prompt as a way to improvise, as a way to create new works? Things like that, which I've got to say, really shows the power of music to keep us going strong through a hard time. And I, I really, really commend all of the ensembles for that. So looking at that and thinking about how we could live online throughout the festival, we decided to launch an online space where we're going to highlight some of those things that have been happening over the last year, but also where you can create your own event. So this is your chance to meet and create with new music lovers all over the world. You might like to host a chat about your favourite composer or explore a new method of improvisation or even curate your own listening party. Really, it's completely up to you. We want you to take control. So keep an eye out because uh, later this year we'll be launching a call for ideas where anyone, absolutely near anyone, can submit an idea that they would like to host in an online space for about an hour during the festival weekend. And um, as I said, we'll also use this space to highlight some of the wonderful online work that our ensembles have been doing. And alongside streaming performances, Coma will also include things like a deep listening session where we're going to celebrate the sonic works of pioneer Pauline Oliveros. But at the centre of our online platform, Coma is going to feature a brand new digital commission by two very special American sound explorers, Danny Clay and Michiko Toya. Danny and Michigo are two really, really rare thinkers and musicians. They have an incredibly unique practice and they're working together to create a digital work that will be entirely interactive called Listening Grounds. So this is a work that they're going to create with you, the participants, wherever you are. Starting in May 2021, they're inviting you all to get involved and together they're going to create with you a digital sonic garden which will premiere at the 2022 festival. There'll be more information in the coming weeks about how to get involved. But for now, I'd love to introduce you to Danny and Michiko to tell you a little bit more about how this will work. Hi, my name is Danny Clay. I am a composer and music educator based in California. And I'm thrilled to be working on a new project with Coma and Michiko Toyer based around the idea of building a collective community sound garden. Hi, my name is Michiko Toyer and I am a violinist, a visual artist, a community shaper and builder, and I'm really excited to shape this collaborative community garden of sound together with Danny Clay and the Coma Festival. One of the things that's really exciting to me about music is how it can be this sort of community common space for creativity and play. 
for me, making music is really about connection. It's really about cultivating a shared space together. And I think that a garden, a community garden in particular, provides this beautiful metaphor for um, what it could mean to shape sound, to shape relationships through sound. Over the course of the next year, we're going to be building a project with different ensembles that will encourage them to use the metaphor of gardening to plant their own sonic ideas. We are going to be shaping spaces where people can plant their own seeds and find a way to grow sounds in their local communities. And I think for me this is really what what making new music is about. It's about connecting with the world right now, the places that we're in. And I'm really honored to be part of this festival, which I think really embodies this idea of collective musicking. I'm really excited to be a part of this, um, this experiment, this festival, this collaborative creation. Looking forward to sharing more about this project with you very soon. Thanks, Danny and Michiko. We're very much looking forward to see how Listening Ground unfolds. So another major part of the festival will be the premiere of the second edition from Coma's Part Song Collection. The Part Song Collection was initiated in 2017 by James Weeks, who wanted to address the lack of contemporary repertoire for the untrained voice. The first collection includes works by Sylvia Lim, Michael Bizarro, Amber Priestley, Michael Finnessy, among others. So Coma is really proud now to be bringing out the second edition of the Part Songs which will feature in the 2022 festival. These works have been commissioned by Janet Oates, and I'm gonna hand you over to Janet now to explain a little bit more about the project. The Coma Part Songs project started a few years ago when James Weeks and I wanted to run a course at the Coma Summer School for vocal groups that anyone could enjoy. And we found there was not enough repertoire really. So we decided to commission some. This is the result, published in 2018, Part Songs, Volume 1. It has 12 new pieces in it by a wide variety of composers, and the pieces are great. There's some theatrical ones, some meditative ones, some that look conventional, some that have improvisation in. And the volume has been very successful. Pieces have been performed around the world by a variety of small groups. So we thought, what about the larger groups? What about the mainstream choirs? So Part Songs Volume 2 is going to be published in March 2022. Twelve new pieces, again from a wide variety of composers, but this time for any sort of larger choir, whether that's a choral society or a community choir with mostly women in it. And the pieces, we started to perform them just before lockdown. So March 2022 is going to be the premiere of most of them. It's going to be a real adventure and again, groups from all around the world are going to perform them. And then the third stage that I'm personally very excited about is opening up the project to children. It's still in the discussion stages, but we've already taken some of this kind of music into schools and the children love it and they're good at it. They like collaborating, being creative, exploring their voices, exploring the new challenges of contemporary music. And that's what the Part Songs project is all about really taking these new ideas about singing and new ideas about music to everybody, contemporary music for all. Thanks, Janet. And continuing on, we thought it'd be nice to share a small excerpt, um, actually a composition of Janet's from the first edition of the part song. It's called Atomic Choruses.
And again, if you're curious, the entire work is available on our YouTube channel. We're getting almost towards the end of our launch now. But before we do that, I wanted to send out a major, major thank you to our 80 plus partners who help us to continually keep this festival fresh, innovative, and most importantly, help us to connect with musicians all over the world. Our partners include professional musicians and ensembles, major venues, community music hubs, music and publishing centres, youth music organisations, amongst so many others. There's way too many to name individually, but we've been, well, we asked two of our really long standing partners to say a few words about tonight, and they are Making Music and the London Sinfonietta. So, Making Music is the UK's membership organisation for leisure time music with over 3,700 groups representing around 200,000 music makers across the UK. Here is their chief executive, Barbara Eifler, to say a few words. Hello from Making Music, the Association for Leisure Time Music, with a membership of around 3,700 groups of over 200,000 hobby musicians. And thank you for asking me to speak tonight. Um, we think the work COMA is doing in championing new music is really important and inspiring. As musicians, whether we're professional or hobby musicians, we respond to the world through music, and the living composers who share that world with us will have the musical skill and vision to help us do that. And then there's the group we play or sing in. As organisers or musical leaders of the groups, we want to keep people interested, give them a variety of experiences, the opportunity to try something new. But contemporary music often evokes two scary things, something far too difficult for me to play or sing and something not easy on the ear. I could add a third that it's really expensive to buy or hire. So this is where Coma comes in, providing flexible and importantly affordable open scores by interesting and respected modern music creators, and then providing inspiration through the festival every two years. For this video, I'll ask a couple of Making Music member groups why they took part last year. Plautissimo is a flute choir in Southampton, which for the festival concert commissioned a piece for a program of all contemporary music. They didn't use coma music, not finding anything that worked for them, but felt part of a bigger event through listing their contribution on the website and map. The King Edward Music Society of Macclesfield used the festival to create joint workshops and concerts between two of their own four groups, plus local society of recorder player members and the choir from the Macclesfield Music Centre. As well as perhaps realising that contemporary music is playable, enjoyable even, the wide variety of new music being workshopped and performed that day would have brought home to participants that living music creators write in all sorts of different styles. And perhaps different audiences will have been introduced to these performing groups because of a different kind of music being presented. So there are lots of great reasons for making music member groups to get involved in the festival. And we look forward to hearing about plans for next year and then sharing those with our members. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. And now I'll introduce Andrew Burke, who is the Chief Executive of London Sinfonietta, another long-standing partner of the COMA Festival. Hello, my name is Andrew Burke, the Chief Executive and Artistic Director of the London Sinfonietta. It's a real pleasure to look forward to the next COMA Festival in 2022. And based on our exciting collaborations in the past, we know we can expect fantastic concerts involving people of all ages, abilities and backgrounds performing alongside our professional musicians. The spirit of the organisation, what it stands for and what it enables people to do together is something we're really behind and we're very glad to have spoken to Chris over the years and been part of evolving the ideas and the concepts that Coma has so brilliantly led on and taken us all on a journey towards greater inclusion and access to this fantastic sound world of new music that we're all so passionate about. So looking forward to next year and sending out a message of support and endorsement for what Coma are doing. See you next March. Thanks so much, Andrew. I, I know it's 
particularly inspiring for the Coma musicians to be able to sit side by side with the musicians of the London Symphony at us. We're thrilled to have you on board again. So that is your whistle stop tour of the 22, 2022 festival or what it looks like right now. There are so many fantastic initiatives to get involved with and I really do encourage you to do so. So here are the best ways that you can keep across what we're up to. I would really encourage you to follow us on social media because that's where all the latest call outs and new projects will be announced. And if you're new to the world of Coma and you'd like to get involved wherever you are, please do get in touch. We would love to connect you with any activities that are happening in your local region or perhaps look at maybe starting something new. Aside from the festival, Coma also has some other really great activities coming up. In July this year, Coma will present our online summer school. And in September, we'll be running a music theatre course in Greece. And then in January 2022, Coma will present our midwinter composers course. Links for all of these events will be available in the chat. So before we say goodbye tonight, I thought it might be nice to share just one more musical excerpt. This was a performance by the refugee chorus of a very powerful work called Exile by Niels Ronsholt. And the performance was directed by Laurie Luxemburg. So here's that excerpt. Another really, really special work there. Again, whole thing available on our YouTube channel. So that's it from us tonight. Um, I can't thank you enough for joining in. I hope you're as excited as I am about the festival next year. Thank you so much to our ongoing funders, partners and supporters. Um, the festival just would not be possible without you. I particularly want to thank the Arts Council, the FOIL Foundation and the PRS Foundation, our major supporters. Thank you so much to the Coma team for the incredible work that you continue to do. It's completely inspiring for me to have come on board to such a special team and as well to the Coma board for your ongoing support. And finally, an extra, extra special thank you to the extraordinary Chris Adams, the videographer who has worked tirelessly on every single edit you saw tonight. He's been an absolute joy to work with. Thank you for joining us. As I said, please do get in touch get involved and I hope to meet many of you across this year and indeed at the 2022 festival. Thanks again and have a lovely evening. <laughs>